creative friends. My name is Joey Balistrieri. Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to unbox and do my first project with the Magical Mystery Beadbox for this month. It is the October 2024 beadbox and it is called First Frost and you guys it's it's always good. The, the uh, Magical Mystery Beadbox is always good but this month I would have to call this um, elegant whimsy. There's always a little bit of whimsy in the Magical Mystery Bead Box and always really unique beads and Jesse James Beads is really famous for their boho beads so wait until you see the strands in this month's box. I am just in love with them. They're so unique and so fun. I'm going to start with the little packages here and just unbox things really quickly. I've already designed a necklace. Uh, most of the way kind of designed it but um, I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because I want to jump right into a project in this video. So the first, um, I love the names that they do. The first little set is called Hot Cider and it is so pretty. It is some leaf charms, a pave crystal magnetic clasp, and a silver toggle clasp. Look at that. It's so beautiful. Oh, you know what? I thought these were charms. Oh, this is a clasp set. Oh, I love this. See, this is gorgeous. I love this hot cider clasp set. Three really unique clasps. This one is gorgeous. I love it and I've never seen it before. This is a smaller version of a larger clasp that I actually already have in my stash, but I am not sad to get another one of those. That is absolutely stunning. I'm going to set that there. And then this is the Forest Charms. These are leaf charms. These are absolutely beautiful. I have these, I think, in a bright gold, but I love this color of metal. This is so pretty. This sort of antique brass, this bronzy color is so pretty this time of year. And then these are so wonderful in design. These are hammered charm links. So um, these are just so wonderful to have pretty links with a little bit of texture. It's, you know, something you can't really do with wire because your links would be open. And I just love having those to work with. And I also love, as we go through this box, it is a mix of all the metallics. I love that. I love the gold, silver, and the antique bronze. So gorgeous. And then um, I'm going to bring in a little dish. And this is the first frost bead mix. And oh wow, there's some links, some more links in this. And some, I see some ceramic beads. I love this colorway. Look at the ceramic beads. I love those for the possibilities of design because they generally have pretty large holes. These are gorgeous, these little frosted rounds. Those are gorgeous. And as I said, there's a mix of, of metals in here. Look at these spacers. They're a little bit chunky. I love those. You can just totally get lost in a Jesse James bead mix, and you can't even believe everything that they fit in one of their little boxes. Look at this bead cap. I wish we had feel a vision because this is so, like, it's got a weight to it and a heft, and it's like, it's nice and thick. This is a beautiful, beautiful bead cap. Oh, look at these like eggplant crystals. Those are gorgeous. Let's see what else. Some turquoise rondelles that are faceted. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at that. Oh, that is stunning. Okay, I didn't see that when I peeked in this box. So I may have to um, work out my design a little. Oh, there's two of them. I may have to change my design idea a little bit. <gasps> Look at these leaf-shaped crystals with facets on both sides. Oh my, I love those. Oh, and there's some shell leaf in here. Um, let me put this down. It looks like, let me grab a little piece of wire. These are gorgeous. Look at this, you guys. Oh, my, my wire has a little burr on that end. Look at those. Those are absolutely beautiful. I love those. Oh, this mix is just fabulous. There's quite a few of the uh, ceramic beads in here, and there's these kind of 
dark, rich, burgundy, berry colored shell beads. I'm sure the drill hole goes up the middle of those. Look at that. I love a good coin bead. They're so fun. And look at these. Oh, these are beautiful. These giant crystals. Um, these mix so well with the strands, which we'll get to. I'm so excited. I'm, my eye, when I lay everything out, is just going from one item to the next. Look at these little glass. Um, are they like drizzle? They're not drizzle. They have like a swirl in them. Look how gorgeous that bead is. I love this color. That is stunning. Uh, there's quite a few of those bead caps in here. Let's see if there's anything. Oh, and another a silver bead cap in this mix. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anything? Oh, and some like smoky topaz rondelle crystals that are faceted. This is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I love those. Okay, and then our bead strand that I am just dying over is called Ancient Oak. And of course, we have to look at this boho bead, this beaded boho bead. This is absolutely stunning. This is going in my first project for sure. And I love these, like these are um, almost like a crystal, uh, like a sparkle and then lacquered boho bead and look at the bead caps. I will cut this apart um, for my first project because I'm also in love with this little spacer bead that's floral all the way around. Um, even this little bead on the end. What a bead strand. Oh my. And this is another ceramic bead with a large hole. And even the bead caps are stunning. But look at these. These almost look like a lotus flower. Um, or I don't even know. I've never seen a bead cap like that. But look how beautifully the bead fits inside this bead cap. I will cut this apart for my first project, but for now, I'm gonna just continue to show you what's in this box. This is called Woodland Shadows, and it has a little bit of everything. There is, what is this? This is um, like a frosted glass, like a matte glass round, and it has a little bit of variation in the color. And look at this faceted rondelle bead. Oh, that is so beautiful. And the facets are really like soft and smooth. You get the dimension, but that bead is just wonderful. And some crystal rondelle spacers in a couple of sizes. There's the little small one, the larger one. Look at this pave bead cap. Is it a bead cap or is it attached? Oh, that's attached to the bead. I will cut this strand open as well for my first project because I thought those were bead caps, but that's actually part of that bead. So I'll cut that apart for my first project and kind of see what we want out of there. And then there was this a beautiful silver chain called Cold Snap, and this is absolutely, absolutely a gorgeous chain. I mean, honestly, you could put the silver clasp on this. Let me get my one little link here untwisted. You could actually put the silver clasp on this and just be done. It create a pendant. I may actually do that. I may actually use that silver clasp and take one gorgeous bead and just create a pendant necklace, um, which could be layered with other things. This is so beautiful. I love this chain. I love that. Let's put that there. And I think I'm going to be using this in my first project as well. It's called Icy Elderberries. This is absolutely stunning. This is a double bead strand. So you get twice the length of a nor normal bead strand. I'm assuming that's what that means. Um, and this glass has the Aurora Borealis finish. And um, they are just beautiful. They are, they're, um, what did they say? Pairs beautifully with the components in the Magical Mystery Bead Box which it certainly does. This is so beautiful. I love this size bead. And you know, this can be your body of a piece with some of these chunkier beads. This is absolutely a beautiful glass strand of beads. I love the finish on that. I love the way the color uh, just changes. It's opaque, but, but the color as you go around just changes on each bead. So pretty. And then let's get another dish. This is called the Autumn Paths Bead Mix. Let's 
Oh, oh my goodness. See, I did not peek ahead of time. I only looked through the, the packages. So um, this is just gorgeous. Look at, oh, look at this, you guys. L look at these elongated bicone, crystal bicones. Let me put this down and put this on a piece of wire. Oh, these are so gorgeous. They're almost like a bugle bead, but they are faceted and it's like a stretched out crystal bicone. Oh my, that is beautiful. And there's quite a few of them in here. Oh, wow. Look at that. I have to tell you, um, one of our viewers, um, if you're a comment reader, I know you have seen her name. Um, her name's Janie. And this getting the Magical Mystery Bead Box is the first subscription that she has ever done. And when I unbox this, if you're watching Janie, which I know you always are, I can't even imagine how excited you must be. Uh, the beads in this box are absolutely amazing. And I, I, my eye is just jumping into this bead mix. I can get lost in a good bead mix anyway, but this one is spectacular. I don't even want to put these little crystals down but look at these spacers it's a large hole spacer it's dimensional oh it's a bead frame i just saw the hole oh my goodness this is amazing so what's cool about this is that you can use this as a bead frame you can fit a bead in here so um let's see if we've just pick one you can fit if that will even fit let's see you just back your back your um that one might be too large it is let me find one and show you how a little bead frame works well here's a small one so you just put your wire through and you have to kind of line up your bead inside and get the wire through everything so you get like a floating situation with your bead but you can also just leave the negative space but when i picked this up i thought what a gorgeous spacer and let's see there's a few of them at least where's there should be four usually I have three it looks like these are gorgeous that is one of the prettiest bead frames I've ever seen um, and these are little lamp work beads look at this these are so small I'm used to seeing this type of lamp work bead quite a bit bigger and look at that this bead mix is gorgeous and I have to say oh there's my fourth one I thought there was a fourth one I have to say a pop of red is going to be a big trend um, and one that I love as we go into 2025 um, because I don't usually do head to toe red but red like this it, the way I'm seeing it here is just so pleasing and it just brightens up any outfit look at the little leaf charm that is gorgeous and the, I love the bronzy color of these beads. And there are some little, like, um, little flower beads in here. And what a gorgeous color. Look at these. Aren't they beautiful? They have so much dimension. I can never have too many flower beads, but that color is absolutely gorgeous. Let's see. Oh, and there's some little rounds in here and some little... These are so adorable. Look at these tiny crystal rondel spacers that are in this mix. That is so gorgeous. And there's a little like green druck in here, or just a, looks like a, maybe a three millimeter little round bead. Look at that, you guys, isn't that so pretty? What else is in here? Oh, these gorgeous like nugget beads in gold and some cube beads. I could get lost in this mix. I could play in this mix for hours. So this is the Autumn Paths bead mix. It is absolutely gorgeous. And there is one more thing in our unboxing. Oh, I did that. I was I was looking at the strand. This is called the Mum Blossoms and this is just a beautiful little pot of spacers and they are so gorgeous. So this box is just amazing. What an amazing box. I, my eye is going from ceramic beads to shell beads to beaded beads to crystal beads, a toggle set, some rings to work with, some leaves, some crystal leaves, um, a, several, you know, the strand of beads. This bead mix is absolutely breathtaking. A whole little pot of fabulous spacers. 
This is an amazing, amazing box. Jesse James Beads just outdid themselves this month. So I am going to dive into at one project at least today. Um, I want to make a Y necklace and I'm just going to show you. I When I put this out on my mat to share with you, I went into my own stash with a project bin and I shopped for chain for to add into my first project because I want it to be a rather long necklace. And as much as I love this chain, um, it's not quite long enough for the design I have in mind. And also um, looking at this, I just think this is like a standalone piece, although it would make a really gorgeous bracelet too. Absolutely. Um, so I have to think about this one, um, but there are so many focal beads, so many statement beads in this month's box that honestly just making a gorgeous pendant to hang from this chain um, would just be beautiful. But I am gonna kind of borrow something from my stash for my first project. So I'm gonna clean up my mat and I will be back to design something with you. You guys, I am gonna have to like calm myself down because I am so excited about this design this is going to be the world's most stunning most unusual most elegant most interesting <laughs> necklace um, this is going to be a really cool Y necklace that's the shape that it's going to take and I have laid everything out here um, and we'll start with the center of the Y necklace. So I just took some 20 gauge wire. I love the soft flex wire. Um, it has an anti-tarnish coating and I used my one step looper to put a simple loop in the bottom. And I have opened all the beads. So this is a mix of all the beads. I threw in a few of the icy elderberry bead strand and I mixed a little bit of everything to come up with my components. And these bead frames, I'm using one of them as a spacer bead on this component, but then I'm going to use them actually as a bead frame on my chain part. So I am super excited about this. I did go into my own stash and pull out just a couple of things, a couple of um, bright gold bead caps because I just wanted a little bit more gold and there is silver as well in this box so if you love gold and silver you could mix all the metals I kind of did the antique bronze and the bright gold and kind of stuck with that and um, as I said the let me just kind of show you like I've turned the bead caps in all different directions and I love to do this off camera because that's my favorite part of jewelry making is just like stacking the beads and getting the shape that I want. So I'm using my pliers for some of my simple loops and my one step looper for <laughs> some of my loops. So I have one in here and I'm just using my mostly my one and a half millimeter one step looper and I'm just going to get another loop in the top. Um, let's see, I think on this one actually, I'm gonna switch to my larger one step looper. I'm gonna go to my two and a quarter millimeter and I'll show you why. Um, because I'm gonna put one of the decorative rings, one of the ring components. Let me just get this loop in here and I'll show you why I wanted a little bit larger one. I am going to attach the top of the center of my Y necklace to this ring, I think directly, if I can get it open wide enough. I'm so excited about this design. And as it was like coming together, um, that's when I tend to sometimes make mistakes because I'm excited. I'm excited to share it and um, I have to settle down and do the work. <laughs> so let me get this closed. And one of the really special things that's going to be part of this design is that the drop, the Y drop is going to have two choices. So that is the very center of my necklace. So that's why I wanted to go up to a little bit larger loop so that um, it hangs directly from there. And then to here, I'm going to add a little bit of the chain reaction that I had in my stash. I had this pretty blue and I had this pretty like bronze faceted bead. But as I was doing this, I was thinking if you love to make beaded chain, which I do, 
this um, this strand would make a beautiful beaded chain for this piece but I had both of these and I love the blues and the browns in this box and I had both of these so instead of sitting and making the chain I am going to go ahead and use what I had um, and I might, I don't know if I have uh, links, but you can go on the Jesse James Beads website for their chain reaction. It is wonderful. Um, and they have a lot of different colors, different metal finishes, and I always keep some in my supplies. So that is my downward drop. And to the bottom of this, I am going to add half of the leaf clasp to the very bottom of this. So that is going to need a jump ring. Maybe, I have to check my orientation. After I have this all connected, I may remove this jump ring. Um, I, You know, I, this chain that I had um, is a little bit rustic and the loops are alternating directions, but I'm gonna go ahead and attach this with a jump ring. And when I'm all done and I put it on my mannequin, when I put it on Gabriella Eva, I'll check the orientation um, jump rings are great and easy ways to change the way a drop is facing. Um, easy to open and close. So, um, you know, I'll start with one. Put a. It's a little bit tricky to get behind. The loop on this clasp is kind of behind the leaf motif. But I got it. Just close it really well. Really important, always important for things to be closed really well. But in this case, we don't want to lose anything. So to this drop, I am going to create two choices. One of them is going to be this big, ginormous, stunning bead stack. I really just used a scrap of wire just to get my stack. And as I said, I pulled in a couple of things. There, These little gold spacers were on one of the strands, but I pulled in a couple extra bead caps from my stash. But I need a giant head pin for this component. So I am going to take that 20 gauge wire that I was um, warming and straightening and I'm going to do a pretty big like spiral at the bottom and make like a giant spiral head pin for myself. So I want to start with a nice blunt cut on the end of my wire which the one step looper if you're making loops with that you know you can skip that step with your cutter. And let's see I'm going to bring my round nose pliers to this wire and start with a little loop and I might even hammer this. Let me see how it looks. I love to hammer when I'm making a really big spiral. I love to hammer them. So I'm just going to in small increments roll this wire against my finger into a, a spiral. And I mean I, I'm, I'm concerned about the scale because this beaded boho bead is very big and I don't want like a little, you know, petite looking head pin under it. I want it to be chunky and just look like it all belongs together in size and scale. So this is going to be a pretty big spiral. Let's see. That's pretty good. I'm going to go a couple more. It's going to go a couple more turns. And I'm not too, I do want to hammer this one. So I'm not too worried about like um, my coils because when you hammer something, it gets out of shape anyway. And I want it that way. I'm going to hammer it flat and I'm also going to texture it like with some dents. Um, I don't know. I just wanted to make this a little bit rustic just because of the style of the beads. So I have my little spiral in there. Now I'm going to turn this into a head pin by grabbing a hold of the wire where I stopped a spiraling and just, whoops, my plier slipped off, sorry. Um, just grab it and just bend it straight up. And when I hammer, I am not going to hammer up here, just my spiral. So um, it doesn't take a lot. I'm going to use, let's see, I have a riveting hammer. I have a chasing hammer. This is a riveting hammer. Um, I like this one. Let me um, set my little bead stack out of the way. And you might want to mute your volume. Uh, I am going to pound a little bit to flatten this. I'm just going to put it so that my, my wire that I'm going to stack my beads in is off the edge of my bench block. And I'm just going to flatten. 
it's not too bad. I like the little, um, I really like this riveting hammer because it, it has this end and also these edges. And I like that kind of dented look. And I'm going to do both sides. And you can see that I'm now spreading out, uh, spreading out those coils that I made. Oh, that is so pretty. And I'm going to come to the other end and just put some dents in it in a couple of different directions. And I'm going to do both sides because this will be like a pendulum swinging. The riveting hammer kind of to me when I'm doing this it kind of looks like diamond cutting a little bit it I flatten the wire and then put a little sparkle back into it and as you can see I am changing the shape of my spiral and I have made you know I've completely changed the molecular structure of the wire so um, it's very rigid now but I can still come back in uh, you can still move it a little bit once you've done that. I opened out by flattening it. I opened out my coils a little bit, but I think that is beautiful. I love what that hammering does. Um, I just love it. I think it's so artisan and just so beautiful. So now I'm going to just stack these beads on this wire take my little scrap away and stack them just the way that I had uh, lined them up so I'm going to put one of those faceted rondelles and then one of these bead caps facing down aren't these gorgeous oh my gosh I wish I could have a whole box of these they're a large hole the the little wreath of flowers is so gorgeous it's just wonderful and then let's see I did one of my uh, two of my own little gold bead caps um, I just layered them up like that and it's just because this is such a big hole on this beaded bead and you can see a little bit of the workmanship and I just want to camouflage that so it looks like that and let's see next up is another bead cap from our strand facing up another one of my little rondelles and then I just topped the whole thing off with one of those little spacers that was on the strand so my drop looks like this so this is going to be my drop for the very my this is going to be my choice number one drop for the bottom of my Y necklace just like a super stunning super amazing um, and so that has to get attached to the bottom of this uh, second half of the of the um, component and I think that I am going to do a wire wrapped loop and I need it to be going um, perpendicular to my spiral in order to be the right direction to attach this to the top so I am going to get a hold of my stack of beads and my spiral is parallel to my mat so I'm going to do my my 90 degree bend in the perpendicular of my mat and honestly if you get your direction of your loops wrong you can change it pretty easily with two pairs of pliers but if you know what you're planning to do to begin with you know it's always good and I'm going to come right about there on my round nose pliers um, that'll give me a, a nice size loop not too tiny not too big and I'm just bringing my wire over the top I'm going to rotate my plier so the bottom barrel now became the top barrel. I have a good grip here and I'm going to bring this around. This is so big it's bouncing <laughs> and I'm just going to make like a super nice neat loop. If you like messy wraps, a lot of people love the look of a messy wrap on a giant chunky thing like this. That is fine and sometimes when things are really big, um, I make my jewelry with my heart. So sometimes when things are big like this, I'll even wrap down to my stack of beads and I have extra wire here so I may even wrap back up toward the loop right on top. I just kind of decide um, as I'm making the piece what I what I want to do. I, I you know I plan a little bit my designs but mostly I make my jewelry with my heart and I was doing a wire wrapped loop because I really want to center everything to just make the beaded work on this bead look as good as possible. So I think um, 
it looks pretty good but I think I am gonna wrap right back up just to make that the wraps chunkier so I'm going right on top of my first and look how good that looks it's just a nice chunky uh, wire wrap so just come around find a good stopping point and snip and tuck okay okay and with that same wire my softflex 20 gauge I have made some jump rings and I do like to attach pieces like this with jump rings just for the extra movement and also um, when you're doing like something that's convertible it's nice to have the choice if you need to change something out just by opening and closing a jump ring okay that is done and so now that is going to get attached right here to this leaf with one of these jump rings actually this was for my chain I I do I I forgot that I had done this this is 18 gauge wire and I decided to do a really big ring I'm gonna put um, I may I used my one of my large steps on my bail making plier and made a really really big um, really big jump ring I have a little bit of a burr inside my toggle it's keeping my wire from going in there I don't know if you can see I always link this little set of tools in the description box of my videos there's five or six different sizes it's like little reamers or little file there is a file in it too if, but if you need to clear the hole of a bead or like there's a little metal burr on the inside of my toggle and it was preventing my there we go preventing my jump ring from going in and now I'm going to add this to my top of my component and I just want to make sure that my my jump ring is closed really well get my other pliers in here okay so my bottom of my Y necklace is done let me just check and make sure oh that's so pretty so that is the bottom so now this can hook right on to the leaf and that's my Y drop on my necklace you know if I want to take this off and do something not so chunky I have designed a little smaller drop that coordinates with the center of the necklace and I'm going to hang one of the little leaf charms from the bottom of this so there's a little bit of dangle to this one and so again I just put a simple loop in the bottom of a piece of wire just like we've been doing and here's the little stack um, and I just added in you know a little pop of gold I also have this little set of Tibetan spacers um, that are pretty they're antique gold I think but it's a little bit brighter gold and I even just did one of the little blue beads peeking underneath um, here's the little set of spacers so I just wanted to add in a little bit more I felt like I needed a little bit more I can I always link the things that I've used in my project um, in the description box below and so um, Oh, I think I put I had I lost a, a bead cap I love stacking the bead caps these little um, bright flowers that were in uh, one of the mixes it just you know adds a little something to the top of this drop and so let's see let me get my direction I've made this little hook and that is going to be um, this is going to be so long for you to see but this little hook is going to get attached to the front of this and then here's the option for that I made it so that it fits inside and I'll show you how to do a little hook if you want to do one for yourself um, so let me see which direction I want to go that's going to get a jump ring there and so this needs to go again perpendicular to my mat so I need to make my my loop going that way um, and this can be a simple loop so I'll just get my um, hold it the way that I want it and get my one step looper back in here I can definitely do a simple loop here you can do a wire wrapped loop or a simple loop I won't really need to open this but um, oh actually I am going to open it to add it to 
my hook that I made. When I was sitting quietly, like designing and working out all these different connection points, um, I had it all straight in my head, but I'm really excited about it. So now, like explaining it is, you know, it's a little, like a little, a little strange. But I'm just going to open this simple loop. And if you did do a wire wrapped loop, of course, you can use jump rings. Let me get attach it to the little hook that I made. I went ahead and made the hook because before I started filming, I kind of wanted to try this out and see how it would look. So that's um, how my own little handmade hook looks. And I'm just going to take a jump ring and add it, um, add this little leaf. Let's get a pretty small, get one of these and just um, dangle my leaf from the bottom of that. And of course the orientation matters because um, my hook has to go facing backwards. So just like that. Okay. Oh, that is so pretty. So once the necklace is put together, there's a choice of either this drop or this really, really large one. And so I was thinking what a great gift this would make because you can do the body of your necklace as the gift and make a couple of drops as options and even different color beads, like go into a completely different colorway if your Y necklace is done with pretty neutral beads. And that can be a gift that keeps on giving because you can add more drops later on, you know, for your mother, sister, or friend, you know, like I just think it's such a good idea. I love options. Sometimes when you're getting dressed, you'll put something on and say, oh, that's way too big or that's way too small for this outfit. And this way you have some options. So there's my big one. I'm gonna set these aside and um, we are going to do the, the, the body of the necklace or the part that goes around our neck. So let me show you one side is already done. So I took, the, they're gonna be the same on both sides. So I took my blue beaded chain that I had in my stash and I just made this little component with one of the bead frames that was in the box and more of that same wire. And then to the top of that, I added my other beaded chain. So it's a little bit eclectic, but they work so beautifully together. And as you can see, I just happen to have these chains in my stash and they just work beautifully with the colors of the box. So the blue part with a jump ring is going to get attached to one side of, well, to the ring. There's not really a side to it but I'm just gonna open a jump ring and put it through my chain and then put it through, put the jump ring through the ring. And that's one side of the necklace and I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. So I'll show you, I have everything in the dish here for the component. There's the blue. This little clasp wants to grab onto this chain. I may change out the clasp. Um, there's my same exact links, and I did not measure. I literally put this around my neck to see about where I would want it. So I'm gonna start by putting a simple loop in one end of another little piece of 20 gauge wire. Um, I'm gonna go back down to my one and a half millimeter, just, and you can definitely make your loops with your pliers. Um, I have designed two pairs of earrings. They are off to the side and I'm gonna show you those too. I could not help myself, you guys. This box is so amazing. When I started cutting things open to design the necklace, oh, there's so many possibilities. And I'm gonna come back with another project with the reds that were that the, the reds that were in the box. They are amazing. Okay, so this little component is simply one of these little beads and then one of the bead frames and then I just have to kind of fit this little blue bead inside the bead frame and wiggle it around to get the wire through the hole when you use a bead frame especially if the bead fits inside this well 
there's a little um, lining up to do for the stringing, but just be patient, you'll get it. There we go. Isn't that cool? And if you're a fidgeter with your jewelry, you have like a little floating bead. I love bead frames. And then another stack on that, and then do my loops going in the same direction. So get another, another simple loop in. And I'm just going to tidy up my loops. I can see that they got misaligned a little bit in the one step looper. That um, happens to me when the beads are spinning because I don't have that, that um, fixed point. <laughs> okay, and now uh, this component is going to connect my two, um, my two different rosary chains. So I'll put one right here. Work hard in a little bit and can open either one, whichever one is easiest. I think opening my simple loop is a little bit easier and then I can work hard in that again when I close it. A little bit of force. And so my second side is done. I wanna make sure that I'm attaching the blue part down. So same exact thing on this side, another jump ring go through my ring and then through my last loop on my blue chain. And then I simply have to put a clasp on, look at this Y necklace, you guys, it is so gorgeous, it's so long. I realize that it's like nearly impossible for you to see this on my mat. Um, so don't worry, I will put some pictures up at the end but I love a long, gorgeous, dramatic Y necklace. It is one of my favorite, if not my favorite necklace style. I love making them. Um, and especially when you have like uh, focal beads like this, because if you use a lot of chunky beads on a piece, the necklace is very chunky and heavy. But this way, these stunning focal beads are part of the design, but the piece is still lightweight and comfortable to wear. So I can take that off and move to my really chunky drop if I want to. So um, I just am gonna show you really quickly um, with that scrap of wire here. Um, I literally just was using this little piece to play with my bead stack. And I'll show you how I do this little hook that um, is you know interchangeable. These can be used for bracelets. These can be used for the back of a necklace. In fact, I might even just use this for the back of the necklace. I wanted to use this magnetic clasp for my closure, but that will drive me crazy. It's grabbing onto, it's always finding this chain, whatever it's made out of. So I'll just do another hook and that can be used for the back of my necklace. So I'm gonna come down, give myself plenty of space here and just make a bend. I'm gonna bring this all the way around and just close it really well. Just get it as close as I can. Don't skip the step of warming and straightening your wire because when the wire's warm and when you go slowly, it performs a lot better for you. So I like to take a little bit of time on this part because that's the actual hook part. So I like to take a little bit of time there and once I have it the way that I like it, and you can hammer these too if you like. Um, in fact, let me just show you, I like to even do it with my rubber mallet. Um, it just will smooth out once you've done this step here. Um, the, the rubber mallet work hardens, but it also like just cleans up the wire a little bit and you can just do it on both sides. I love hammering. I keep my little bench block and a little selection of hammers off to the side of my work table. I love hammering my jewelry. It's, it's so fun. Um, and then from here, I think I'm going to trim just a tiny bit of this wire that I have going up. Just felt a bit long to me. And then from here, I'm going to come about where that wire meets and do a 90 degree bend. 
and then this is a, a normal wire wrapped loop. I'm going to put my pliers in there. Um, I just want a small loop, enough that a jump ring can go through, and just do the, a wire wrapped loop. Rotate, wrap that around, center everything. And now I am going to wrap down and go right over what I have cut. I cut my, um, I do have this a little bit shorter than I normally would like, but that's okay as long as I can wrap on top of my cut wire and it's just encasing the cut wire in in the wraps that's them and I do like on my hook if you can see I did cut this one a little bit short but on my hook I left myself a little bit more wire to wrap I do prefer that look but if I use this for the back of the necklace it will be okay these are so fun and easy to make and then you know I'm just gonna come in and uh, fuss with it a little bit like I always do just tuck my end and straighten out my coils uh, if I don't, if my coils are not tight to each other, I'll like just zhuzh them up a little bit and can see that I need to align my, align my wire a little bit. Very pretty. Okay, and then it's just a simple matter of making your bend. Um, I usually come a little bit away from my wraps and just bend it over. And then just take, um, I like to use a flat nose plier, but you can really use any plier. I'll get my flat nose plier and just grab the end where you've fold it and kick that out and that is just a pretty little hook so now I can use um, I can use jump rings to attach I'll use a large one let me get a medium one I'll use a large one for my my um, hook to go into and a little bit smaller one to attach it to the back of my chain And there won't be really a, a front or a back. This necklace will be um, any way that you want to put it on will be fine. So um, I'm going to attach, let me get my little jump ring opener on. I'm going to attach this right here. And then my larger ring for the hook to go into. I love making my own findings like this because if you ever need a closure in a different color wire than what you have or, you know, uh, nothing is just really working just right, it's so nice to make your own. And as you can see, it's a pretty fast and pretty easy thing to do. And then I'm going to put this one through and put my hook through. Let me go this way and close it really well. Did I get it? Not quite. There we go. And look at this, you guys. <laughs> I have a little, I have a little clasp handmade for the back of my necklace. And you can judge this, you can make it a little bit clo more closed if you want, but it's so simple and so beautiful. And I know that this is like super long. It just makes me so happy. This is absolutely a stunning, stunning necklace with two options for the drops and as i said you could make more if you were doing this for yourself you could make more drops to change out but what a fabulous gift to give somebody 
um, to give them some options with their designs. So let's dive right into the two pairs of earrings. This is the first pair. This is what it looks like. I took literally two lengths of the chain that I used in the box and a little bead stack, a little bead stack just from our box. And the only thing that I added in to this is I had these decorative head pins in my supplies. And this is just a bead stack. Um, I took one of the little gold flower caps and then um, I put the one of the red beads inside it I just didn't want the green and they fit perfectly so I'm going to run my head pin through that and through the hole so I have this little drop going down and then I am so in love I wish I could have like thousands of these little spacers I love those and then um, one of those rondelles and then I just love this little tiny crystal rondelle spacer just to top everything off and on these head pins they are so tough uh, they're very thick gauge of wire so I'm gonna just make my simple loop by hand um, the one step looper is not usually very happy about super thick <laughs> wire <laughs> and I'm just gonna come in really down close to pretty close to the end of my pliers and it kind of looks like I'm doing a wire wrapped loop I'm gonna even get my plier in here to help me and I'm just gonna pull this around because they are tough and just bend it down just get my loop get everything centered while it's still on the barrel of the plier just pull it to wherever I need it to be and then I'm gonna come right at the base with the flush side of my cutter and snip get my cutter in there there we go and now I can tidy that up straighten it a little bit more if it needs to be and that little drop is done and then I have literally a two lengths of the chain that I used in the box I opened one of the ends here to take it off and so that end is still open and I'm going to thread that right onto the loop that I just made maybe if I can get my fingers out of the way <laughs> this is so fun you guys this is like um, it's so gratifying because this is beyond simple but it is stunning can't see there we go and just get my pliers in and close that loop really really well and then I'm just going to add it to my ear wire I just had these little ear wires in my stash but if you um, need ear wires we're going to do another pair of earrings uh, if you don't have ear wires I meant to say we're going to do another pair of earrings where we are going to create our own ear wires and that is also super simple I just want to be really careful these are gold plated um, but I just want to be really careful not to damage the loop on it so this little pair of earrings is done look at that aren't they fun oh my goodness I just love those what a statement those are okay last project for today um, I have another length of that 20 gauge wire and I'll show you this is the earring it's literally a little stack um, I left this long because I like to cut them and finish them off at the same time so that both of my earrings match so let's set this one aside and the first thing I did is take a little um, splayed like a paddle head pin that I had in my stash and I fed it through one of the beads and also this is the this is the um, also very very thick so I'm gonna do my simple loop the same way that that I did on the other one just give it a bend and kind of looks like I'm doing a wrapped loop I just have found that the one step looper was struggling a little bit so I can do um, can do my simple loops on these by hand okay go ahead 
ahead and close it and work hard in it. And now for this um, section of the earring, I'm just going to put a simple loop in one end of my 20 gauge wire, just warm and straighten and smooth. I'm going to start with a nice, um, with a nice smooth piece of wire, and I'm going to open this. Go ahead and attach my little dangling bit, and work hard in a little bit. And now this is just another stack. Let me copy my stack. Look at these beads, you guys. Aren't they amazing? They are um, like a, fr I'm not really frosted, but they have that little pave bead cap on the top. Oh my goodness. They're just gorgeous. And um, so just put one of these little spacers. There were a couple of those on one of the strands. And then my next item was a little sparkling bead and I did one of the little flower bead caps facing down, a tiny little crystal rondelle spacer, and then one of these little, they're like barrel shaped in that like antique bronze color. Isn't that gorgeous? It's so simple. Okay, and now we're going to do, um, turn this into the ear wire. It's going to be all in one. <laughs> so. I am going to hold this the way that I want, which is so that my little splayed um, little head pin is facing forward. So that's going to be the front of my earring. And I'm going to come right here and bend this toward me. Okay, so that little bend is keeping the, these beads from coming off. And then I like this mandrel this um, plier for this but you can really use anything that you want i just have gotten used to to this one i need to have it facing forward still and then i'm going to put this in so that i am wrapping around the smaller of the two barrels and again that's just the way that i like it because that fits in my piercing really well um, and i'm just going to bend that wire over that barrel and just bring it around to the back you can make adjustments to this after you're you know after you're all done in other words you can pull this out um you can take let me i normally would put these both two earrings and do them both at the same time so that they match but because i wanted to do a sample for you guys i didn't do that this time but that's another one of my tricks is um, when I'm doing them to put them both on the mandrel at the same time and that way I know that both earrings have exactly the same curvature um, but I did okay they're not it's not too bad and then I'm just going to hold these together and trim them so that they are identical so I'm just going to come right about there always I always cut a little bit more than I think that I want because I can always trim trim it off <laughs> if I need to and then I'm going to do the same thing that we did on our little hook that we made. Use my flat nose plier and just come right to the end and kick that out and do the same thing on this one. And then that little um, set that I showed you, the reamer set, there is a file in that. Let me find it here. There's a file in that set. So, you know, I just don't want the end of my earrings to be sharp. So you can do it that way. But I also have another tool that I love. It is a battery operated reamer and it has, um, I don't have the reamer attachment on. I have the little cup end. So it's like a tiny little cup that fits over the end of your wire and you just press the button and go around and it takes the sharpness off so that you're not putting anything sharp in your ears. So you can do it by hand. I am a jewelry toolaholic, so I love my tools. <laughs> and I know so many of you message me that you're um, just getting started with jewelry and with this type of art and that you're um, starting to collect things. So I think it's fun to show you what I know that's out there and what I've 
used. So this second pair of earrings is done. Aren't they gorgeous? And that is just so simple to make your own ear wires if you don't have ear wires and that's just like an all-in-one earring and I absolutely love this. I have this incredible jewelry set and I still have so many beads left over to work with. Um, I will put links in the description box beneath this video to anything that I've used that I think you might be interested in. And I have a discount code for Jesse James Beads. Um, and if so, if you wanna subscribe to the Magical Mystery Bead Box, that code is good for that. But it's also good for anything on the website as well if you're a first time um, customer to Jesse James Beads. And um, you know, you can if you can check out their the Magical Mystery Bead Box schedule. The longer that you sign up to receive it, like if you sign up to for a year, the price comes way down. Or you can just do a one-off and buy a box. So, you know, they don't lock you into anything you don't want to do. So it's a really great company and their box is different than anything out there. It's just always so full of whimsy. It's just absolutely amazing. So I thank you so much for watching. I hope everybody's safe and well and having fun on your, vid on your beading mats. And I will see you in the next video. Ciao, creative friends.